Karate friends, welcome to Classics in Color, your weekly dive into some of the ancient world's wackiest facts. I'm Mark Graves, and today we will be taking a look at masturbation in the ancient Roman and Greek world. Apologies if in this video I seem like a little scrunched. <laughs> I'm trying to remember to stay loose but the furnace in this house has been broken for a couple of days now and it's probably gonna be a couple more days before it gets fixed. So I'm just struggling a little bit. So thank you for your patience. Let's get on with the video. One of the sources I used to help put together today's video is a book called In Bed with the Ancient Greeks by Paul Crystal. It's a rather provocative title. He definitely doesn't shy away from what he's talking about. And it is not a perfect book, but it's a good survey of a lot of things. One problem is that most of the examples that he found from the literature were about men. <laughs> there were almost none about women, and that's sort of an ongoing problem in both ancient Roman and Greek literature, is that there's just not a lot about female sexuality, whether that's ladies masturbating or ladies having sex with other ladies. It's just not talked about that much, I assume, because most writers and most audiences are men, and so they're much more interested in writing about their own experiences. So unfortunately, today we are also going to be limited to mostly just talking about men. So what was the general mindset of people in the ancient world toward masturbation? Is it great or is it an abomination? Uh, it's more on the great end of things, but it is qualified. So generally it's seen as like a good safety valve to let off pressure that you don't want let off in other ways. But like I said, it's qualified. So yes, masturbation is healthy, but so is sneezing, so is pooping, right? Just because you need to masturbate doesn't mean we want to see it or doesn't mean that it is beautiful or interesting in any way. Uh, the next thing is that masturbation is great if you're lower status, but if you're higher status, then you are probably going to get judged if you do it at all, and especially if you do it with regularity. And that's for a couple of reasons. One is that self-discipline, self-control, moderation, these are all very important values in the ancient world. And so if you are a high status person and you go around eating all the time or you're very miserly, you're hoarding money all the time or you're masturbating all the time, then people would see that as, oh, you don't have control over yourself, you're selfish, you're gluttonous, and that would be perceived as bad. The next thing is that if you are a high status person, if you come from good stock, then it's seen as like selfish or wasteful to throw sperm away, I guess. It's seen as sort of your responsibility to your state, to your clan, to produce lots of heirs. And so you should be having sex with people so that you can have as many children as possible. And if you can't or you don't want to have that much sex with your wife, then if you're high status, then you have lots of access to slaves that you have sexual control over and also to prostitutes. Prostitution is perfectly legal and acceptable in most of the ancient world. So again, if you're high status, there's just no real need for you to masturbate. You have access to all of those other resources. So uh, it's seen as something that yeah, you shouldn't be engaging with all that often. So masturbation, Mostly good, but qualified. Next, what we have all been waiting for is, are there stories about people masturbating in the ancient world? And the answer, of course, is yes, <laughs> starting at the very top with the gods themselves. So Hermes is the god of traveling, of tricksters, of thieves, and a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> but also, apparently, he is sometimes credited with being the inventor of masturbation. And at some point in the vague timeline of Greek mythology, he not only invented it, but then he taught it to his son, Pan. So Pan is a god of nature, among other things, and at one point he fell in love, more like lust, with a nymph who was named Echo. And Echo rejected Pan. She had wanted nothing to do with him. And he was so angry about this that he drove a bunch of shepherds mad. They just went totally crazy and they tore Echo to pieces. Um, very violent. But after her death, Pan was just sort of upset about this whole thing. <laughs> and so Hermes, to help him 
get over this woman that he brutally murdered, teaches him how to masturbate. Next is the philosopher Diogenes, who, as always, is just a gold mine of bizarre anecdotes. He was just a very countercultural person, shall we say, and was just always getting in trouble for being bizarre and being interesting. One time he got in trouble apparently for eating in public in the agora, which is sort of a public meeting slash marketplace. Uh, apparently eating in public was just seen as being very rude and crass. Not only did he get in trouble for eating in public, but he also got in trouble for masturbating in the public meeting marketplace. So we would see that also as being quite crass and quite rude. Uh, but allegedly, when asked about this behavior, he famously responded, if only it were as easy to banish hunger by rubbing my belly. So too bad for Diogenes. There was no such thing as stand-up comedians in ancient Athens. I'm sure he would have gotten his own Netflix special and everything. But moving on, last but not least, we're going to look at an account by Athenaeus about King Demetrius, who was a king of Macedonia at one point. At a drinking party once, King Demetrius was showing Lamia various different types of perfume. Lamia was a pipe girl, and they say that Demetrius was very sweet on her and found her sexually exciting. When she claimed not to like any of them, namely the perfumes, and was acting very haughty towards the king, he signaled for a slave to bring him some expensive spikenard perfume. He rubbed his penis with his hand, smeared the results on his fingers, and said, Smell this, Lamia, and you'll see how much better it is than the others. She laughed and said, In my opinion, you poor bastard, that one smells more disgusting than all the rest. Demetrius then responded, but the fact is, by the gods, Lamia, that this one comes from royal nuts. So yes, that is absolutely another very humorous scene, and we do not have time today, but if you look at Greek comedies, there are so many examples of masturbation being part of the joke or the butt of the joke. And so if you're interested in looking up all of those other examples, uh, absolutely start out by checking that book that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So thank you so much for watching. Special thank you as always to subscribers and to Patreon members. You guys are great. Um, stay warm, everyone. Kyrie thing.